Hello, everyone. Hope you had a uh, happy new year and uh, off to a good start so far for 2023. I wanted to give you a quick recap on a few things going on there at the tail end of 22, as well as uh, a few things that uh, are taking place here in 23. So uh, as many of you may have seen as part of the uh, Budget Act that, uh, that Congress passed literally two days before Christmas, uh, there were changes to the required distributions within that, uh, within that bill. So if you were already 72 and already taking required distributions, there's really no change. But it, where it does kick in is for people that were turning age 72 and beginning their required distribution here in 2023, uh, now you do not have a required distribution. So that new age has now become age 73. And that applies uh, for everyone you know, born up until 1959. Now, eventually it goes to age 74. That'll be for people that are turning age 75 after 2020, after 2033, you know, as well. So for most everybody, uh, think about it now, you know, that new required distribution age is age 73. Eventually it becomes age 75. The rate at this point in time did not change. So when it was 3.6% that you had to take out at age 72, it's now 3.78% for when you're age 73. They also lessened the penalty, not that this should apply for, for most of you, uh, but the penalty in the past for not taking your required distribution was 50% penalty plus ordinary tax. The new penalty is now 25%. In either case, you know, take your distribution. You don't wanna pay that penalty tax. The bigger planning issue for most of, of you, however, just because they put off the required distribution and perhaps say you have a little bit longer until you have to take it, uh, the reality is you probably want to go ahead and take it on time, either because you're using the money or two, as we've discussed in the past, tax rates are still going up in 2026. There's been no indication of them changing anything in that regard. So more than likely it still makes sense do Roth conversions, continue to pull money out of the IRA, while taxes today are generally cheaper than what they're going to be you know, three, four years down the road. So that's the, the update for required distributions you may have heard about. The other part is when we look at where interest rates and uh, those types of uh, fixed accounts are paying today. Certainly we know interest rates are a lot higher today than they were 12 months ago. All indications are we're getting another interest rate increase here at the end of the month, here at the end of January. The only question mark, it seems to be, is it going to be another 50%, 50 basis point increase or perhaps only 25? Most things are pointing towards we'll likely get at least two, if not three rate increases. And then the, the Fed will pause you know, for quite some time, as they say. So as we look at where fixed accounts are paying, I wanted to give you a quick recap because for many people, as we look at portfolio construction going into the rest of 23, some of these fixed accounts or even bonds are going to have more of a place than they had in the past. So for a little perspective, money market inside Fidelity right now is paying almost 3.9%. Uh, nine month CDs, we can generally get in the four and a half to 4.6% range. Fixed annuities, fixed accounts are upwards of 5%. And even short-term bonds now are paying roughly uh, 4.75 to 5. So all of those things that were generally paying 2% or less last year are beginning to actually become attractive again. Now, right now, we're still, of course, battling inflation, but we have had some reads as of lately to say inflation is beginning to edge down. My personal opinion, it's still going to take a couple of years before inflation returns to any sense of normal. Uh, but as we're also seeing, 3% may be the new normal for inflation versus 2%. So the good news, though, on the fixed account front, there are quite a few options where we could be conservative and safe and still earn a reasonable rate of return. The other message I wanted to share real quick is on the real estate fund, particularly on the real, on the real estate front, particularly on the real estate fund. Uh, we've owned a Blue Rock fund for a number of years, and quite honestly, it's performed very well over that time period. And it goes positive in 2020, up you know, quite a bit, 20% in 2021, did actually finish 2022 up 10%. However, the last few months in particular, it has begun to give a, a little bit of that back. And so our intention, you'll see this in portfolios, 
will be exiting that as much as possible, either drastically cutting it or exiting it altogether here at the end, in February. So many of you will get notices on that like you do every quarter of coming up on the liquidity event. Uh, this uh, in turn will likely be uh, a quarter where we do take advantage of that. So uh, they've largely focused on you know, the commercial properties or then ap apartments, their second. So that's partly why they held up so well in 2021 and actually ended positive in 22, while the rest of the market was down 18% for the S&P and even bonds were down 13, 14%. The fact that they finished up at all was, was actually a good return. But based on what we're seeing in the last quarter, and particularly the last two months, uh, we think it's time to go ahead and exit. So we'll be doing that on your behalf. If you do have any questions or have questions on required distribution, have questions on fixed accounts or where fixed interest rates are in your particular case, as always, don't hesitate to give us a call, shoot us an email, reach out. Uh, that's what we're here for. So again, hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks for your time today, and we'll see you soon.